I'll start off if that's okay. I uh, was thinking about this on the drive out. First of all, thank you so much for everything that the base does. And we always talk about the base. It's not the base, it's the people that's on the base. And I don't want to ever forget that. But I got to thinking on the drive out about in our country, just how much symbolism there is. You know, what the red stands for on our flag and the white and the blue and, and why that's so important. But then I started thinking that's no different really than the planting of these trees. You know, I think uh, it shows growth. It shows uh, that we're moving forward. It shows that there's something that is uh, has lastability that will be here long after we're all gone. I uh, And then the main thing I think it represents is that it shows that relationship between the city of Enid and Vance Air Force Base that will be here for a long, long time. And uh, I'm glad to be a very, very small, small part of it. I don't think I'll make it to the trees, make it to the <laughs> gate, but uh, at least we can do our part and plant those. So we are very proud of our, of our, of our people that serve on the base and uh, proud of our veterans also. 102 years old, by the way, 102 uh, years old. So, uh, with that being said, Colonel, I don't know if you want to say something. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for another great uh, Veterans Week here in Enid, America. It's amazing to be part of this community and to have the veterans that come out and support us in the ways that they do. Uh, to have this small symbolism of the trees that will stand here, as the mayor said, uh, from now until eternity and we'll go all the way down uh, this road and that'll be a great symbol of this community and how we've come together to honor those that have served. Uh, and we're just so proud to be part of this community and proud of our veterans. Thank you, Mayor. Keith, did you want to say something? Well, I was going to ask uh, Shortfinger if you would like to say something. I'm fine. I'm fine. JD, would you like to say something? Well, I kind of picked a little bit better day, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just fine. I, I appreciate all you guys. Well, we have another windy day in Oklahoma. We're putting up some trees here to block some of that wind, hopefully, as we progress. Uh, this started four years ago uh, to remember our veterans that are leaving the base, going overseas, protecting our freedoms, as did the ones before us, and also the ones that are coming in with the black ribbons, those are for those who are still over there our POWs, Shortfinger, JD, know about our POWs personally. I said we also have the black ribbons for those killed in action. I personally know about killed in action. I have a great uncle, Bernard, who was killed in Korea. He is still over there. I said, so that motivated me to do something to remember those who have served before us and to honor those who are serving now. And hopefully, like I said, I want to see it make it to the gate, but I don't think I got that much time unless I get to JD's age. So, just want to thank everybody for coming out today. Very good. July 5th, 1951, the 2nd Battalion of the U.S. 21st Infantry Regiment and 24th Infantry Division received orders to secure Hill 850, located in the present-day demilitarized zone, to separate North and South Korea. Companies F and G made first contact with the enemy south of the hill and moved forward through small arms fire, mortar fire, and machine gun fire. By noon, the U.S. troops reached the summit, and that afternoon, they pushed the enemy to the far side of the hill before establishing defensive positions. After settling down for the night, the next morning, 
Chinese troops attacked the hill, and the men of Company F and G were forced back to their original lines. Master Sergeant Bernard William Halloran, who joined the U.S. Army from New York and served with F Company, 2nd Battalion, 21st Infantry Regiment, and 24th Infantry Division, was killed in action during this attack on Hill 580. His remains cannot be retrieved due to the enemy activity on the battlefield. The area then became part of the demilitarized zone, which is heavily mined. My great uncle will be in North Korea probably for my lifetime, and hopefully my kids will see his return. Thank you.